how are these big oil companies going to, not only how they're going to handle it, are they going to allow that to become a reality? You're not talking about small companies. You're talking about uh, uh, China Petroleum Company, net income, you know, uh, revenue is a $355 billion company, right? You got uh, Petro PetroChina 320, you got Aramco, you got uh, Shell 261, you got BP, you got Exxon. These are not small companies. These are guys with a lot of money, with lobbyists, and a lot of people that are making millions on top of millions of dollars. Uh, are they really going to allow the end of oil age? You know, the, what the environmentalists miss is that it's the, the companies don't have a choice if you change your behavior. So if you buy an electric car, if you start using less energy, if you put a solar panel on your roof, if you behave more efficiently, they're powerless, and that's their biggest threat. That's my biggest frustration with the environmental movement, is they keep attacking the supply side. For example, new pipelines. New pipelines are really environmentally friendly because the existing infrastructure is very old and it leaks. But they oppose new pipelines because the theory is if we stop supply, uh, then we'll stop demand. But that's pretty regressive. You know, the point being, it hurts poor people more than it hurts rich people. And, you know, it's pretty almost fascist, arguably, to, to say, okay, I'm not going to let people supply energy because you shouldn't be allowed to use it. What you should be doing is changing your own behavior, and that would then knock the companies out. Where the companies, the companies are changing as fast as they can. Um, they've been busted in the case of Exxon for trying to denigrate the climate change movement, which is really, you know, nightmarish for Exxon. But most of the other companies, if you look at a Chevron or a ConocoPhillips, they just accept that the change is happening and that they simply got to be more efficient, better players to survive uh, the potential for lower demand in the future. At the same time, demand's not falling. Demand's hitting a record high for oil, and we're at 100 million barrels a day plus, which is, you know, 1,000 barrels a second of oil are being used. And to replace that with, with solar, People just don't understand the energy density of oil, which, by the way, is naturally occurring, arguably environmentally friendly because it comes from the earth, uh, where you're going to be replacing it with solar panels, which are often built, 90% more or less, are built in China using coal-fired electricity and forced labor. And you're going to tell me that's a better option than using Texan oil? So that's part of the ESG back, back, uh, backlash. It's really dynamic, though, I must say. You know, this is a... This is an ongoing situation, fascinating to cover, obviously. But uh, what I will say, tell you is the more the government gets involved, the more they're going to screw it up. And so far, we've seen California, UK, arguably certainly Germany, essentially completely screw up their energy systems by going too far, too fast. It, it, it's funny you say UK and California because I think Boris Johnson said as of 2035, they're not going to allow for gas-powered cars to be sold. They're going to ban it. You can drive it, but you can't uh, sell it anymore. And I think Newsom announced it last week on right. uh, the same thing. He pretty much mimicked exactly what Boris Johnson said. They're going to do it in 2035 as well. So the, the question it would make me think about is, Paul, this is your world. What percentage of oil is consumed because of cars? What percentage is, you know, can, can you, do you know the breakdown of how oil is used around the world? Sure. I mean, you know, the single largest sector of the oil market, the oil market, as I mentioned, is, is kind of elegant. It's 100 million barrels a day, 1,000 barrels a second. second. Uh, 10 million barrels a day alone is U.S. cars, just U.S. So the single biggest part of the global oil market, the single biggest sector by sector Shit. is U.S. gasoline, which is used, you know, really wastefully. Wow. You know, I think I counted once from my son heading down the Long Island Expressway. We reckon that 80% of U.S. pickups have nothing in the back. <laughs> you know, why are you driving a pickup? Um, as you know, the, the efficiency of the fleet here is the same now today, 20 miles per gallon, as, it, as the Model T Ford. The Model T Ford was about 20 miles per gallon. Now, of course, you've got air conditioning and DVDs and what have you, but the, the fact is, getting from A to B, use is very inefficient. Overall transport is about 40 to 50 percent. Worldwide. Worldwide, yeah. About 8 million barrels a day in aviation is very difficult to replace. They'll tell you they're going to use burger fat in order to make biofuel, in order to run planes. But in reality, you just don't have enough burger fat. Um, so there's numerous elements where you have greenwashing, where essentially they say we're going to use bio, you know, uh, renewable diesel, whatever. But in fact, you know, the 8 million barrels a day of jet fuel alone, simply you, you can't run a plane, not that number of planes, 
uh, on renewable fuel at the moment. And if you do, it's going to be very expensive. And one of the key effects will be highly inflationary food prices. So if you like this little short clip from an interview I did, click over here to watch the entire interview. And please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.